Hey everyone, Tim from Chemphazone here. Welcome to the Maze tutorial. Let's go over some basic things here in 3D Max 2020. I'm gonna go over here to customize preferences and I wanna have our scene undo at 100 and our auto back files, I'm gonna increase it to 10. So that in case if it crashes, you have a few auto backup files. And over here, I want to deselect this selection preview highlight thing in case you have it enabled. The gamma, I also don't want to have enabled. So I think these things are default, the last two. And here under viewport configuration, let's set it to 4K and 8X anti-aliasing here. Let's confirm this. And then there is also another thing under customize. Let's go over here to unit setup and let's make sure we have centimeter here. So once we have that, let's confirm it. And now over here, I would recommend you to have the same modifiers in there that I have. You can first of all say show buttons there if it doesn't show up and then you have to configure it here you can just drag and drop these modifiers and they will show up on the modifier list. And in case we make use of some of them, it might be good if you have the same ones that you see here on my end. So let's go over here to our left autographic view in 3D Max. And let's start with the plane. I'm pressing control here in the viewport, which will make it a uniform plane. And then with the move tool, let's right click these tiny arrows that are pointing down so that they center out to zero. Now we just drag and drop our reference image here onto that plane. Let's just snap out of this left autographic view and drag it a bit to the back here on the X axis. Then we can press L again to be in the left ortho view. And let's add a cylinder here to our scene just gonna drag it out a bit here and I'm gonna give it a height of 100 centimeters same as on our reference image let's go over here to our rotate tool actually let me undo that and let's enable this snap toggle here so we can snap it in a five degree radius and we just want to have it rotated here so that it actually points up from where our pivot is and then once again, I'm gonna center that out here on zero Y and zero Z so that we have it here centered in our viewport and same as on our reference image pretty much. So as a next thing, I'm gonna adjust this height. So now we use this cylinder here to basically have the main body of the maze and let's also go back to a reference image and let's get rid of these height segments. Back on this cylinder here, I want to have 24 sides. And now let's just make a save file here. So basically, let's not forget to have backup files and save files as you go here. And now let's right click the cylinder and make an editable poly out of it. I'm gonna switch over here to our vertex mode. And then here I wanna have our scale tool and I'm just gonna manually scale that down. And then here the next edge loop, same thing. Let's also bring that down. And then let's put it to edge constraint mode. And with our move tool, we're gonna bring it all the way down, get out of the edge constraint mode and push it back up. That way we have this perfectly horizontal cylinder there. And up here, let's bring it down to that point where we have this ring on the concept image or the reference image. Let's grab these vertex points here and bring the whole part a bit down here in size with our scale tool. So as the next thing, let's go over to edge mode, double click this edge loop here and let's bring up the chamfer dialog. I'm going to increase it a bit here and then put it to two segments. This way we have it a bit rounder. So let's just go scroll down here 
and let's select these vertex points, switch over to our move tool and let's bring them further down here on the Y axis. Now let's go up here and I want to go over here to polygon mode actually. Select this top polygon part here and use this inset tool here in combination with our move tool. Back to left orthographic view and now let's select these vertex points and let's just bring them here further up as we see it there on the reference image. I'm gonna select this edge, make a ring out of it and then connect it here with an extra edge and scale it out so that we have some nice roundness on there. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I wanna add an edge and also scale it just so that it's not so low poly looking there. And now let's select this edge loop that we have here and let's just position it so that it makes more sense to what we're going to do next. Same as this one here. Let's bring this one up to where this ring here starts. So now we're still missing some edges. I'm gonna add one more here and bring it up to the bottom of this ring. Let's select these edges here. Press control and polygon mode will convert it to a polygon selection. And then let's detach it as a clone. Let's get out of polygon mode and then select this ring that we have here. And let's just center the pivot here so that we have an easier time working on it. Let me get out of the transparency mode and let's put our shell modifier here onto that ring. And then we have to tweak a bit the inner amount and the outer amount. And I'm gonna have like an outer amount of 0.4 and an inner amount of one. Let's collapse this shell modifier here. Right click and collapse to, And then right click where it says editable mesh and make a poly out of it. So now let's select this ring here once more. I'm pressing F3 to get into this wireframe view. I want to auto smooth this ring here. And then what we can do is add our chamfer modifier to it. And this here is the new chamfer modifier in 3D Max 2020. Let's put it to unsmoothed edges. Let's uncheck min angle. And let's put the middle ring to triangular. You can see the amount that I put there. I'm gonna have it here not too wide. And then let's add the turbo smooth modifier with two iterations on top. And let's go see what that looks like here. I'm gonna go back here to our left orthographic view and let's continue with another element. And those elements I wanna have with 18 sides here. And essentially we can make use here of the other reference image on the right side to get the proper radius for it. So let's have this cylinder here and I wanna rotate it 90 degree. And then let's just position it back into place here on our working mesh. Let's put the height segments to one and then let's right click the cylinder and put it to editable poly. Now we can actually work on it. Let's select these vertex points and push it further back here. You can see it here. We have these tiny overlaps there. Let's select that polygon and use the inset. Bring that down here and then extrude out more polygons. I'm gonna put it to one centimeter. Go back to our left view and then let's push it back some more even. Out of that, we're going to extrude out some more polygons and use the scale tool here. Push it back like this and then extrude again. And in combination with our scale tool, we follow the shape that we see on the reference image. Let's have another extrusion that we push back here, followed by yet another one. 
Let's confirm this, bring it here to the right side on the x-axis and scale it down. And then let's use the inset here and push this polygon part here out to the front. I'm gonna use one more inset and this one here I'm going to collapse. So now let's select this single vertex point and push it out as well. And now we have the base shape here of this part. One thing that I want to do is select this polygon and also give it an inset because ZBrush doesn't like n-gons. Let's get out of this mode and I want to select everything here in polygon mode and give it the auto smooth with a 45 degree angle. Now let's go back to that ring, copy these two modifiers and then paste them here onto this new object. Let's go in the chamfer dialog and let's bring that amount down here so that we have more details here and it's not so washed out looking. So now we have this one element here and we need to have some more of them. So first of all, you can see how the pivot is not at the center. We want it to be perfectly in the center of this maze. So I'm going to go over here to effect pivot only and then just right click these tiny buttons on the Y axis. It can stay the same on the Z. On our X axis we have it at zero and the Y axis on zero. That's what matters. And then we can go over here to array and use our preview. And then let's put it to a count of seven and let's rotate it here on the Z axis with an angle of 60. So now we have one duplicate here. If I'm pushing that out, you can see it. So let's just delete this one. And then let's press control to select all of these elements together with this ring. Let's go back into left orthographic view here and just center it out a bit more here on the Y axis so that this is more in the center. You can see here, these edges should be aligned. Center of that ring and the center of these spikes. I'm actually gonna use free Turbo Smooth iterations here on that ring. So I was just jumping out of it. Now let's go back here to this selection of these parts. And in the left orthographic view, let's press shift to make a clone of it. And we want it to be an instance. Let's make another one here. Bring that down by pressing shift. Also confirm that as an instance. And that way we already have a lot of the work pretty much covered that makes the obvious look of that maze with these spikes here. But we still have some more work here ahead of us. Let's bring these vertex points up a bit more. I'm going to jump back into transparency mode with Alt X and these vertex points, I want to scale them down a bit more on all of the axes here so that we see more of this side element that we have there on the reference image once we add that. So I'm going to go out of this vertex mode and let's just go over here where it has our primitives and let's create a box. If you want, you can use the same parameters that I have here. But let's just make sure that we right click these arrow buttons here on the Y axis because we want it to be this element that we see there on the reference image. So now let's collapse this over here to an editable poly. And then let's use our vertex point mode here to bring that further down. This one here we already see on the reference image where the shadows are. So let's also bring it further down and let's rotate it 90 degree. And now I'm just gonna say center the pivot to object here. And then on the Y axis, I'm gonna press zero so that now we have this box here perfectly in the center. And now we can actually start working on it. 
I'm gonna go over here to our edge mode and I wanna add an edge connection here with two segments. Let's double click this loop here. Double clicking an edge will select the whole loop. And then let me just go back here into our left view. I'm gonna bring this up and then switch over here to our vertex selection and scale it out on the x-axis. This one here, let's scale it in. And this one here also needs to be scaled further in. Let's bring that up a bit here, this one. We actually don't need it to extend so much down there. And then this one here, let's also scale it on the x-axis and let's just bring the whole thing up a bit more and essentially we're just shaping out this shape that we see there at the background. So let's take a look at this and let's use our chamfer dialog here on a small margin and I give it two segments to have a bit of a bevel there. And now it looks like we don't have enough down here. So I'm just gonna take that further down again. And now we need to have another case of edge connections here. Let's just have one connection and also scale it here on the X axis. And on a second thought, let's also chamfer that here on a small margin, but I'm just gonna have one segment here. So now we have this piece here pretty much done. I'm just gonna delete this edge loop that we had there because it's unnecessary. And instead, I'm gonna just bring that here further down on these vertex points. So now that we have this piece here in place, Let's go over to our rotate tool and while pressing shift, we're going to rotate it 90 degree here to have it also on the other side. So right now I'm not too happy with these randomly assigned colors from 3D Max. I'm going to select everything that we have, select this little color checker, put it to black and let's just press alt x two times so that we have it here in the solid mode and then press m for material editor and i'm gonna call this material maze and just assign it so now we have the black wireframe and this gray material here i don't know why i was in this color picker it was an accident let's go over here to one of these spikes and select these modifiers and then paste them onto our object that we created here just now. And since that was an instance, it gets applied to the other side as well. So you can see how we have a bit of a pinching issue here. Let's go over here to our metering options, put it to uniform and let's actually leave it here at 0.5 with the end bias, but our amount here, let's make it wider. So let's see what that looks like. And this is something that we can work with. I'm gonna increase the turbo smooth here with three iterations. Let's just toggle it on and off. And that will work for us here. Remember, this is essentially just a block out for once we put it into ZBrush. So now let's just select these objects that we just created and put them into alt x mode basically the x-ray mode so that we see what's going on there in the background i'm going to also put that here to transparency mode and put that up a bit more let's make another edge line here with our connection tool and i'm just going to bring it up like that here without the edge constraints so that we have a bit of a bevel there already. Let's make another edge connection. Let's bring it up here. And actually, let's put it here to our edge constraint mode and repeat what we did earlier. Let's bring it up this time. 
Now let's get out of the edge constraint mode and bring it down here to this point. This way, this is perfectly straight there, vertically. And then we also need to have another edge down there. If you look at the reference image, let's make a connection here and let's just bring it down like that. This edge loop here, let's select it and scale it further down here. This looks about right. And now let's go over to our polygon mode here and make a selection for these polygons there in the center. And this kind of messed up. Let me undo that. And let me switch over here to this mode, select object. Shortcut is Q. That way we don't move anything as we make a selection. So now we have a selection here for these polygons. It's kind of annoying with the back facing of that image. Let's get out of the selection. Just select that reference image, go to object properties and then check back face cal. That way we can look through it. Now let's go back here to our selection. And let's go over here to our front view and also select the other side. So now we have this here on both sides and I'm going to detach these polygons as a clone. Make sure it's a clone. And now let's go here to this selection of these detached parts. And we want to take it into isolation mode here with Alt Q just for the moment so that we see what we're up to as we add our shell modifier on it. So I'm going to put the inner amount to zero and the outer amount to 0 0.85. This way we have the same kind of a thickness that we see there on the reference. And now we can collapse it. Make sure to also collapse the mesh so that we are back to editable poly. And now I want to select only the first two vertex points here of these pieces that are sticking out, go over to edge constraint and move it up like this here on the Z axis. So now let's chamfer this selection so that we have it a bit rounder. And I want to go back here to this element and also focus here on the top part Let's go over here to our ring selection in the inside. I'm going to make a ring converted to vertex points and then deselect the upper row so that we only have the ones here at the bottom. Let me make sure I'm out of the edge constraint mode. And this way we can move these vertex points down here, which results in the same look that we have there on the reference. Let's make a edge selection here on these outer edges and bring it down like this. That way we already have this bevel there that we want to have. Let's just right click on the editable poly and paste our modifier stack from the spikes. So now we also have this as a high poly. Remember you can always press Alt X on an object to toggle the transparency. So if you see me doing that here, it is because I want to see the reference image in the background. So let's go back here to the main body of the maze. And what I want to do is have another connection here, which I'm going to bring up here in edge constraint mode and then bring it down like this. So basically using this technique here once again to have these perfectly vertical lines there. On a second thought, I want to rearrange this here a bit, the way it's split up. I'm going to delete all that here, which leaves us with this part here. And I'm going to detach this one as well. So let's detach it and I'm going to detach it as a clone. Let's select that clone here. And then I'm going to add our shell modifier on it. Let's modify this here. I'm going to have the inner amount at zero and then the outer amount. I'm going to have it at 0 0.45 to add a bit of extra thickness there. Now let's collapse it and let's collapse it to an editable poly. 
I'm gonna select these edge lines here, press control to select both of them. Go over here to our left view, convert it to poly mode, and then we can scale it down here on the Y axis. Gonna get out of the selection here. And let's select this piece again that we have here. What I wanna do is press shift to drag out a fresh set of polygons to that point and then have another one coming out of it. Now let's go to border mode and cap it. And then this polygon that we just created here, I'm gonna inset it and collapse it. So now we are getting to the point where we can start working here on this grip some more. And we're gonna do this by adding some extra edge connections here. I wanna have two of them. And as you can see, they are already in place where we have the spiky part coming out of the grip. So now I'm chamfering these edges. And now we have to get back here to the selection mode and with control, let's also select these parts and bring up the connection dialog and let's have three more edges here. And with this active selection, let's add FFD modifier here with four by four. Let's go over to the control points and I wanna select only these ones here at the beginning pretty much on the left side and then push it over here on the X axis and I'm going to collapse it. So now back to our edge mode, I want to select these edges here in the center and I'm going to put the modifier back on, go over to control points and only select the control points here at the beginning on the left side and then collapse it. And this is quite high poly now, but we can optimize this later. Right now we're only working on the block out for ZBrush. Let's create a sphere here, this bottom part. And I'm just gonna rotate it 90 degrees so that the edge flow comes like this here pretty much. And now let's just center this out here on Y and Z. So now we have to zoom out and bring it back down here on the Y axis. And we can now adjust our radius to fit our reference image. Let's see what poly count here fits. Let's see with 18. That might actually be a bit too low poly. So I'm gonna just have it at 24. And now we can collapse it to an editable poly and let's grab these vertex points here at the top, these first three rows here and bring it up like that. And then we can also give it a bit of a squeeze here on the Y axis and scale it out a bit more. And let's see about these edges here. Let's just select them and control backspace since we don't need them and we can reuse that later for our low poly model. So now I want to select these polygons here and give it the auto smooth with a 45 degree angle. Control I to reverse the selection and also auto smooth it. And then let's just paste our modifiers back on. There's also a spherical part there on the top. So I'm gonna copy this piece that we just did while pressing shift and I wanna make a copy out of it. Make sure it's not an instance, that's very important. Let's rotate it 180 degree and let's bring it up here. Let's just uncheck these modifiers that we have on it and we can just cut off these parts here at the bottom that we don't need. I'm gonna go over here to border mode and cap it and then do the usual where we do the inset on that polygon here and collapse it. So that way ZBrush won't complain. Let me put the modifiers back on. And now with this selection here of that sphere, let me just apply our maze material, the gray one. 
you toggle it here with a transparency, you can see how now it's gray. And I want to continue to make an extra ring here. So I'm going to convert this loop here or this ring together with that polygon there on the top to a polygon selection. And then I'm just going to use the extrude command, put it to zero and then push this up here on the Z axis. And that polygon here, let's just scale it out a bit. And now with that selection here, I'm going to make an extra connection and scale it out a bit here to the sides. Let's just refine that a bit. And let's also use our inset here and collapse it down so this is all properly connected. And let me select this vertex point here once more and convert it to polygon, grow the selection and then auto smooth it. So that once we put our modifiers back on that body, or I shouldn't say back because so far we haven't even put it there yet. Let's just paste it. And that way now we have also a nice high poly here on our main body of that maze and speaking of smoothing groups and high poly right now this year needs a little bit more extra work so what i want to do is go to our editable poly mode and assign a smoothing group here to that part so that this year gets a separation out to smooth and now if we put that back on you see that this is actually following the shape that we want thanks to our chamfer modifier there and we can also do a bit of extra smoothing group work here on that grip so i'm gonna press control as we select these and then use the auto smooth and let's just clear these smoothing groups with the selection and assign one smoothing group to it just to make sure that this is really one and now you can see we have a nice chamfer separation here there might be a bit of pinching but that doesn't really bother us because this is really just a block out that we're gonna do some work on once we're in zbrush where we do the actual high poly detailing so back to that piece let's also make sure we have our modifiers on it and this piece here doesn't have it yet either. And it also needs the gray material just so that visually we see better what we're up to. So make sure that the sphere at the bottom also has the modifiers. And now let's add this handle part or actually the hand guard. Let's start with the box. And then let's affect the pivot here, put it to center. Let's get out of this mode and then use these tiny arrow buttons that point down to center it on the X axis. And then let's collapse it to an editable poly here. So let's take a quick look. This is the shape that we want to follow. We have it all there on the reference image. And that means that we need to scale it out on the X axis like this here, so that we have some overlap there where we have the cylinder in the center. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna delete the bottom part so that basically we're just left with a plane. I guess I could have just made a plane to begin with, but sometimes you change your strategy as you go. So let's just reposition these vertex points there a bit. And now we want to select our vertex mode here, make a selection for this and deselect the ones on the side with the alt key so that we only have this front edge here. And then let's press shift and drag it along that top side here that we see highlighted here on the reference image. So let's make a few steps here every time we press shift. Same as here. Let's just bring it down on the Y axis. 
and I don't want it to be perfectly vertical there. So I was just pushing it out a bit further. And now let's take this one here. Let's put the effect pivot only mode back on and we can then just use our move tool to put it here into place. We can kind of eyeball it as long as it's sort of the center there of this piece. Now let's use the symmetry modifier on the Z axis, sorry, on the Y axis. And we pretty much have this shape. We can collapse the symmetry modifier. And now we can continue here. We're not entirely done. So let's also select only this edge that we have here. So I'm going to press shift once, twice, and here a third time. So we have three new polygons coming out there. And then here, let's push that vertex back here on the X axis and use our chamfer dialog to give this here a proper chamfer. Let's confirm and use the chamfer dialog again to kind of round that whole thing off here like that. So now actually what we can do is delete this edge with control backspace. Don't need it. And then use our chamfer to do the same thing that we just did at the bottom. That way we don't have this edge there in the way. That's why we deleted it. So let's do that once more so that we also have it nice and round here. Let's get back to the left view and put the shell modifier on. I'm going to put it to zero on the outer amount and increase it to around 0 0.8 here on the inner amount. Let's collapse it. And I don't know why 3D Max always makes a mesh out of these things. When you collapse something, it's kind of annoying. But let's collapse it to an editable poly. And now let's connect these vertex points here. Connect, connect, connect. I have a shortcut for it, but you just saw me using the button. So you know where to find it. And the same thing here, connect, connect, connect. And also here. So now this is all nice and quads, but we still have to do some work here on the silhouette if you compare it with the reference image. So I'm gonna convert these vertex points to polygon, grow the selection to this point here actually once more so that we have this whole range covered and then let's select FFD four modifier and we want to select these center vertex points and squeeze it in here on the X axis. Let's take a look at it here from the other sides. And now we can collapse that. And let's just make sure it looks good from all sides. And now let's make a ring selection here and make a connection with an extra edge. And what I want to do is manually holding control, selecting these edges here so that we have only these edges here selected. And you can see it there if you are in the left orthographic view that we want this to come out. So I'm going to use the control points and the left view. And here on the center control points, we can then push it out like that. Let me collapse this. And now let's select the whole thing and give it an auto smooth. And let's also paste our modifiers on it. So now we have this handguard here pretty much modeled out. Let's also assign our gray material to it. And here is one thing that I want to fix on this part that we did. This should be more hard edged. So what we do in that case is go to editable poly. 
make sure you are in left orthographic view and we're gonna use our cut tool here in the edge mode zoom out and sorry I actually meant the slice plane not the cut tool so now here you want to just make sure that you have basically a horizontal line and then we bring it down here and hit that slice button so that means we have an extra support line going through there so if we go back here now to our modifiers you will see that it's not as deformed as before and we have a harder edge so let's see what we can do as the next thing and I want to go at this extra ring on top of these free rings that we already have in place so let's go over here to our left orthographic view and I want to be in the editable poly mode here without the turbo smooth and chamfer and I want to add two extra edges here and then position them in the same way that we see there in the background and then let's detach this out here as a clone and then you already know what we're gonna do next we're gonna select it and add our shell modifier let's bring that out collapse it and also convert it to an editable poly and now let's just make a vertex selection out of this here and scale it down on the z-axis so that we have some bevel there so I'm just gonna paste our modifiers back on there so as a next thing let's copy one of these spikes that we already made and let's add it to the handguard so let's select one and then make sure that if you press shift and copy it that it is only a copy and not an instance or else it would change whatever we did there on the top part as well and we have to make some adjustments here to those so let's go over here let's select that vertex point select it to polygon and then let's just push it out here on the y-axis and let's use the inset to get some extra bevel here let's go back to move tool and push that out I want to grow that selection and give it a smoothing group and then let's just give this one here an individual smoothing group so now we have it looking like that which is nice earlier on the concept I had it as like these round spheres but I don't like that anymore so here let's just center our pivot on that spike and then let's just go back here to our editable poly and one thing I want to do is control backspace on this edge loop that we have here and also this one here I'm gonna select and make it one smoothing group so that we have a nice bevel here so now let's just put it into place and rotate it and on a second thought I actually want to undo this rotation for the moment because I want to go back here to our vertex mode grab these vertexes and make that part there at the back more of a bigger size so that now that we rotate it we don't have any intersection there so let's copy that it can be an instance this time in case we have to make further changes and then let's just copy it a few more times here and put it into place position it and rotate it and here the last one at the bottom 15 degree rotation here and let's zoom in maybe put that out a bit further so that we don't have too much intersection there where we have this bevel 
and just a little bit of fine tuning here. Let's take a look at it here from all sides. Maybe this one here can also be pushed out a bit further and also a bit more down. And let's zoom out. Let's just take everything into isolation mode here, the whole selection, and let's put our chamfer and turbo smooth back on. Let's just make a bit of a scan here, see if we're missing anything. And I would say we're almost done with the block out. This is what we're going to import into ZBrush and make the high poly out of it. So let's just go back here to this element and push it up a bit. Since we had some extra polygons down there. And then this piece here looks a bit too small in its height. I want to drag that up on the Z axis. Put the modifiers back on. And now one thing that we could also do is add another one of these guys here. Let's select this spike, press shift, and then make a copy on a 90 degree rotation. And then let me just make sure I really have this piece selected. Let's go in the wireframe mode with F3 and let's bring it up here on the Z axis. And that way we have this nice dome here. Let's go out here in the left ortho view and let's see about that piece here. I want to get over here to this loop, make a ring selection and bevel that a bit more so that it's not so low poly looking there. So these are basically the finishing touches. And it looks like this whole element is kind of disappearing there. I want that to come out a bit more. So I'm going to make an edge connection here, convert it to vertex. And then on our Y axis, we can scale it out here so that we have more exposure there. And this piece here, let's bring it up some more. Now let's also give that here a chamfer. and confirm that. So now I feel like this has a more interesting silhouette as before. And that part here, I'm gonna also push it a bit more to the side, just a tiny bit to support that edge flow that we have there on the main body. And then with another edge, Let's also give it a bit of an extra bevel here or curve so that it fits the silhouette of the main body. So that's pretty much our block out. Now we have to export it. Let's make a selection here on everything. Let's just go here to our scene explorer. And one thing that I already want to do is add it here into a layer. Just click on the layer with the selection that will add it to it. And I'm going to call it for ZBrush. And now I'm going to select it again and make a copy of that selection and create a new layer once again. And I'm going to call this low poly. And the reason for that is that the ZBrush version, we want to make a selection again and we want to go over here to this toolbar and collapse it. Say collapse selected and then make sure that it's not a mesh but a poly and now this is basically the version that we want to bring into zbrush let's go here over to export select obj if i find it and let's give that a name here i'm just gonna be boring and call it mace and then i'm gonna navigate here to the zbrush folder of my project folder and just export it here with the default settings. So I hope you enjoyed that 
block out part, I'm gonna see you in ZBrush where we're gonna make some really nice high poly out of it.